Hey guys, and here we are back with another video and I hope you are okay on that side of the screen. And today here we are with a mini computer that we have reviewed here on the channel. And if you want to search for it, it's the Minix G50. Just go to the channel, browse for any topic and you will find whatever I mention on any video. Now today we are going to go in a different direction. Last one we talked about how to install the Home Assistant on Raspberry Pi, but I was thinking what if and only what if, because many of you guys have machines like this and you don't want to purchase an extra Raspberry Pi, you want to use something that you already have 24 seven connected to your TV or to your home, I don't know, any setup that you have right over there. And that is my actual case. As you can see here at the back, I've got a Windows mini computer. It's a Minix N42C. So it's a bit slower than this in terms of capacity, in terms of CPU and so on and so forth, but with great performance, which I'll show you in a few moments. And what I want is to give a alternative to someone that already has a mini computer running Windows 10 in terms of energy cost, it's really, really low and doesn't need to spend extra money on a Raspberry Pi, especially if you are going to try Home Assistant and you don't know if you are going to enjoy it or not. Probably you are going to, but there's always a chance that eh, this is too much for me, too many headaches. So this is what we are going to cover today. We are going to install on Windows 10 the Home Assistant like we did on the Raspberry Pi with every functionality, but in this particular case, on a Windows. Now, talking about Windows and Macs, don't forget to check the sponsor of our video, which is Filmora, a video editing tool available for Windows computers and Mac computers, which is really easy to use, great for beginners, but with a lot of tools that will beginners evolve and even more advanced users to use all those tools. Now it has a lot of filters, texts and transitions, music overlays and elements. But if by some reason you find that these are not enough, then there's a Filmora store that has a lot of packs that we can enrich our library. I will leave a link down below for Filmora website so that you guys can check it out and test the trial version with all the functionalities just to make sure that this is the kind of software that you want for video editing or not. That being said, let's start with the tutorial and pretty easy. First of all, we will need to download the virtual box software, which is free. You can just download it and then install as you would on any other software. And then after that, you'll need to download Home Assistant, the image VMDK. And one of the suggestions that I make is put this uh, image on the folder that you want to leave it. Definitely don't leave it on the desktop. Just put it on the folder that you want to leave, create the folder and so on. doesn't matter where, but just have in mind that you will keep it there when your server is running. So that being said, so that we can avoid an extra step, what we can do right over here next is to execute the virtual box and we are going to create a new machine. Now we will give any name to that machine at your choice. We will uh, select the distribution Linux and Ubuntu. And after that, depending on the system that we have, uh, we will select the memory. In my particular case, I only had four on the machine that I'm using. One is enough. And on the tests that I've made, I'll share with you in just a few moments in terms of performance, but it's behaving quite well. So this one is uh, the G50, which has superior specs. And I can leave a link down below. Uh, you guys will be more than enough for those of you that already have great specs to run something like this and more and more and more. Now, moving along, what we need to do is to select a disk that I'm already using or that it's already existent. And here I'm going to browse the image that I downloaded from Home uh, Assistant web page. That's VMD key file. You remember, we are going to select that one right over here. Now, once we select, uh, we will need to go to Virtual Media Manager on the menu, and then we will select to copy the VMDK and we will select as a VDI image. And by default, it will be a dynamic image and so on and so forth. So we don't need to worry about anything else right over here. We can uh, then go to the settings and then in storage, we will select add and we will add this new copy that we made from the VMDK. So basically we had a VMDK file, we transform it in a VDA and we will use 
this one to replace the storage that we want to be used. Basically, that is it. Now, moving with these settings, we will also need to, well, we don't need, but it would be nice to remove the uh, original VMDK from here because we will, we will only need the VDI. Now, in terms of network, we will need to select the bridged adapter and then on system, we will need to enable EFI. And basically, that is it. Once we save the settings, we can start the machine. And guess what? Home Assistant is running on our Windows computer in this particular case, and we can start using it. If you remember the last video regarding the Raspberry Pi, the setup will be exactly the same. The only thing that we will need right over here is to discover the IP address of our um, internal Home Assistant or the, our virtual box machine. And for that, you might go to your router settings and discover uh, the device that you have right over there, or if you are like me and you have a lot of devices you don't want to borrow, then just write a few codes that I'll show you on screen. We go to the virtual box and we just need to press uh, login and login as root. And once again, login, and then we will write NMCLI and that will give us the IP address of our virtual box machine. And at this moment, all we need to do is to go to any browser, not on that computer, but on any computer in our network and just type the IP address that we got, followed by two dots, eight, one, two, three, and we are ready to go. And then I already explained on the last video what we need to do on the first step, so I'm not going to bother you right now. Now, in terms of performance, just to share with you the type of performance that we can get out of these machines, I did record the screen for a few moments so that I could observe as well what I was getting. And what I can say is that uh, having a CMS for my CCTV system connect, a Android emulator which is Memu and then also browser being refreshed with my power consumption and power production and also recording the screen with OBS and VirtualBox running. The CPU was quite taxed, was running roughly at 95-100%. I was able to use the computer but 100% uh, of usage just telling me, hey, Robert, don't do much with me because uh, I'm getting to my limit. And what I did was to close a couple of apps and I could drop roughly to 55% more or less. Now, the thing is that I want to keep the computer 24-7 uh, connected with all the apps. So I tried to disconnect one of which that I don't need which is OBS that I was using to record the screen. And I can't show you the footages, but I can show you a screenshot. As you can see, 12% of usage without using OBS. So these machines are totally capable of running uh, Home Assistant without any issues at all. And once again, the one that I'm using at the back is an N42C, uh, which has a lower CPU in terms of specs. It has, um, I can increase storage, but I cannot increase uh, RAM. In this particular case, the G50, we can go up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. So we have a lot right over here and we have seen it here on the channel guys basically this is it hopefully this video is helpful for those of you that want to test out home assistant and then you don't want to purchase anything else because you already have a windows machine and you want to use it and a windows machine that doesn't spend uh, electricity like crazy because of gpus and things like that then this is one great option right over here. That being said, if it was useful, don't forget that usual thumbs up, which is really, really appreciated right over here on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.